Hello, dwellers of the internet. Welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about the games that I've been layering this, this audio over for footage for these rambling sessions of different subjects and topics. Jack and Dax to the Precursor Legacy and Jack 2. For the most part, at the beginning, I've been using Jack 2, and for the last two videos, I believe, I've been using Jack and Daxter. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences and comparisons between these two games and what makes them interesting, or why the reception of them was uh, so interesting and so different. Uh, because Jack 1, Jack and Daxter, rather, utilizes pretty much the aesthetics of its environment, uh, the fact that it's all one huge connected world, and uh, the characters and the uh, levels within it that are aesthetically pleasing to make you feel like you're on the adventure of the hero, you know, that trope that is also utilized by several stories like Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and such. You start out as a young boy who has motivation to go out on a journey and slowly the foes get larger and more dangerous and you find yourself in not so much of a peaceful world anymore and the threats get uh, more drastic and more dangerous and it's upscaling, you know, of the the amount of trouble and and the amount of hostility that comes from the enemies around you that you're you're having to deal with and it's uh, it's a great story that's told it's basically the hero's journey uh, put into the ultimate platforming experience that had uh, come out for the PlayStation 2 which was phenomenal at the time because it felt natural to platform on basically everything around you the controls blend together extremely well for Jack and Dexter, which um, why it was uh, met with a lot of appeal and had uh, enormous success on the platform, uh, because it was just delightful to go through that hero's journey again whilst utilizing game mechanics that felt so smooth and that felt as if they were designed extremely well. You know, you were just it was a game about a boy and his little animal friend who he was trying to help become human again. You know, something simple but with magical elements surrounding it, you know, like the old and wise uh, wizard, or sage rather, Samos, who was a master of Green Eco and had keys to all this precursor, these uh, precursor ruins and artifacts that surround the area. and. Uh, you know, basically a simple boy with a simple goal, living in a slightly more complicated world, who had to gain information from this uh, from this master and from these people around him that he requires to complete the hero's journey, which is awesome. And uh, compared to Jack Two, <coughs> who knows uh, why they decided to do this, but. Jack 2 basically took what people were expecting out of a possible sequel for this series, this series that was lighthearted and just delightful to look at and run through, and they pretty much fucked the expectations of what anybody was, was uh, expecting at all when a sequel was announced. They, first of all, they fling you into the future, and everything becomes a little bit more hardcore and edgy, like everything that you had, that was once established about this character had uh, been turned on its head. Jack was no longer this teen who had not been exposed to the world per se and who had uh, gone on an adventure to gain knowledge and strength. He was now this person who had been stuck in a prison and had been pumped and tortured uh, in this prison while being pumped full of dark eco and being transformed into some being that was expected to utilize this dark power in some way. He started to speak and started to become much more of a threatening and uh, untrustful person, someone who would look at everyone around him with distaste because he didn't know what they were capable of, you know, somebody who was private, he became the edgy hero, you know, he became someone who was a lot more jaded to the world around him, 
as a result of being tortured in fucking prison. Uh, not something, not a, not a topic you would expect to come into a series like Jack and fucking Daxter, exploring the, the lost precursor cities around them. Uh, you had, you know, in this future, people didn't live the simple lives that they did. The, the, the characters that you would speak to didn't have, you know, your jobs, your typical uh, farming jobs or, you know, archaeological studies and uh, the the saving of environmental creatures like the moles in the precursor basin that, that the woman asks you to help her with. Uh, you know, the simple gambling. I mean, the, that, that was the most criminal, probably, character that you come across in this game that you that is expected to be a sort of semi-friend is the guy in the barrel who is a gambler. That's, oh, what a sin he's committing. He's he's gambling. That's, uh, that's pretty bad, you know. But uh, you, <laughs> you come across in Jack 2 war criminals, uh, an army that's being run by this baron of this city that is uh, taking advantage of its citizens and making deals for war to keep the city going for uh, eco and for uh, stimulation of his continued rule. Uh, the themes change from Jack 1 to 2 pretty heavily as far as what the circumstances are that the player is expected to deal with, and um, they give Jack guns now. They give him a lot of guns, and uh, he deals with uh, he deals with a crime boss who is your friend. I mean, not exactly your friend, but he's somebody who you rely on to complete a few missions and who you work for in order to gain connections to fight this Baron. There's, uh, there's a lot more edginess and, uh, sort of ambiguity to what would be considered morally good to the character and to the story that they introduce in Jack 2 that, um, I think is, you know, it's interesting, uh, but it turned a lot of players off to the series because they it wasn't the character that they expected Jack or Daxter for that matter to develop in, into uh, you know Daxter gets drunk at one point during this <laughs> during the cutscenes of Jack 2 uh, he uh, you know he's just uh, developed differently and uh, on top of that Jack 2's difficulty is multiplied to the umpteenth degree. It's basically five times as difficult as anything that you do in Jack 1. The hardest level is akin to the easiest task in Jack 2. The hardest level of Jack 1 is probably akin to the easiest task that you would complete in Jack 2, and uh, that's not an exaggeration, that is probably a fact. Uh, everything that you do in Jack 2 was upped in difficulty, seemingly artificially, uh, I'd have to really think about that. Uh, I don't think I don't think it's just artificial difficulty. There's um, well, yeah, definitely some of it. Yeah, some of, a lot of it is definitely artificial difficulty, and some of it is difficulty that ends up being fun when you you know conquer the challenge. That is difficulty with a purpose. You know, difficulty that uh, serves to improve your enjoyment of the game. If you do enjoy difficult games in the first place. But the thing about the thing about Jack Two is that, or the thing about Jack and Daxter is that it's not a series that uh, that had the merit of difficulty making it fun for anybody. It actually was quite the opposite. People liked it because you didn't have to be too good at really anything to to accomplish the goals presented to you in the game. So when you go from that, a game that isn't relying on difficulty practically at all, to a game that is giving you challenges, uh, you know, ring courses and races that allow you, or that are expecting you to basically not, not mess up on one turn of this five lap race and this very unstable vehicle, I might add, unless you get really skilled at it if you wanted uh, the gold for the uh, maximum amount of orbs that they're offering for you as a prize, then you would have to come within <clears throat> within one second of uh, what, what is expected of you in these races and such. It's 
like uh, one of those things where if you mess up in the slightest bit at the beginning of the race or you know midway through it at all or even close to the end you know it doesn't matter where the mess up happens if you mess up at all you might as well just start over because you're not going to complete it you can pretty much expect that you won't because they expect perfection from almost every uh, almost every minigame and mission that you come across you have to uh, you have to be very skilled at the game so for uh, and you you can only take four hits of damage. I mean that well that that's the same in Jack One as it in, as it is in Jack Two. If you have the maximum amount of health around your health wheel, uh, well you have a you have a health wheel in Jack Two. It's a heart in Jack One, but you at the max of each you can take four hits from uh, enemies around you before you die. But the problem is you're dealing with a lot more difficult enemies and circumstances in Jack 2 whilst maintaining the same amount of health. So the ratio of survivability is severely depleted in Jack 2. And it's uh, to, to have to deal with those circumstances, that too turned a lot of people off to the game. Which I think uh, I would say about half the people who came from Jack 1 to Jack 2 to try it out uh, because they loved they loved the initial game probably dropped off after Jack 2 because it was nothing like they expected and it was super difficult for them and they probably couldn't get past the third mission you know what I mean uh, and half the other people uh, including myself, played the game and they were on, on board with it. They were like, "Yeah, yeah, this is innovative. This is different. It's a cool experience as well." I'm, I'm you know, I'm up for wherever they, these people are trying to take me in this series. You know, they had to do it for a reason. And uh, you know, not not to say Jack Two is a bad game. It's wonderful. I love it. But I'm I'm simply stating the reasoning behind why people would have uh, stopped caring about the series or, uh, you know, why the series would have left a bad taste in their mouth. Uh, you know, the, the guns to me allow you to better deal with those difficulter enemies that require, you know, multiple hits and such and have a lot of, a lot more versatile attacks, so, so they give you these guns that allow for the expansion of versatility with your attacks and, you know, that are good for different scenarios and situations depending on your skill set and how you can best work the weaponry and um, you know, they, you wouldn't expect to have to do things like, like, you know, apply different guns to different situations or different attack patterns to different uh, enemy situations in Jack 1 because you never had to. It was always, you know, a reliance of the simple move set, one hit, you know, maybe do an uppercut, you know, maybe do a roll here and you're fine and you never have to worry about any, any other method of attack for any enemy or anything. But Jack 2 expects a little bit more out of you, and you know, for some people that's fine, for some people it's not. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's just something interesting that uh, I thought was cool. I would still, if, if you don't find this to be a problem, I would still recommend playing through the series and playing Jack 2. Um, some people may feel differently. My brother never played Jack 2 for years because he couldn't get past this, uh, the third mission, as I had said before, <laughs> something around, something around there. Um, the difficulty was lessened severely for Jack Three. It's still harder than Jack One, but uh, I think they got, I think the Naughty Dog team got the message that players were unsatisfied with the ridiculous or disproportionate amount of increase for the uh, sequel. So they uh, they lessened it just a little bit. You know, they kept. They kept it at a, uh, at a, you know, an acceptable amount of difficulty for Jack 3, but it was lessened after after the craziness of Jack 2. So, if you want to challenge and if you think that'd be fun, I'd still recommend playing it. Uh, anyways, that's it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.